final time taking the field for Ryan Sandberg this afternoon. The final game of the 1997 season for the Cubs. They're in at 68 and 93. And Jim Ruggleman's lineup for the last day of the season. You'll note there is no Sammy Sosa in there in that lineup today. Sammy will be getting an at bat, maybe two, we're told. But Robin Jennings at the top of the order. Ryan Sandberg will play game number 2164 today. Mark Grace at first. Brant Brown will be the cleanup hitter in place of Sammy. Dave Hansen's at third. Tyler Houston catching. Brooks Kieschnick becomes just the second man to start in right field in 1997 for the Cubs. Manny Alexander at short. Steve Traxel on the mound. And the defense for Tony La Russa and the St. Louis Cardinals. Plantier Langford and Young left to right in the infield. Gaetti Ordaz. De Shields and McGuire. And a battery of Marrero and Manny Ibar. Veteran umpiring crew, Bob Davidson has the plate today. Frank Pulley, Greg Benet, Eric Gregg, the rest of the way around. The Cardinals take the field. They're expecting a sold out of house today. And uh, as much as a lot of folks are here to say goodbye to Ryan Sandberg, and they had a very nice ceremony for Rhino just moments ago, you get the strong sense that a lot of these fans are here to see if Mark McGuire can do the unfathomable. He would need to homer five times today to get by Roger Maris, and that's never happened in baseball. It's never been a five home run game. He did have two yesterday. Now there have been 12 four home run games in the major leagues. Uh, and the most recent guy to do it was the St. Louis Cardinal, Mark Witten. But you got to figure hitting six or seven home runs over a two day period, Stoney, that is a pretty tall order, even for this tall first baseman. Well, especially for the fact that Steve Traxel threw very well against McGuire at Wrigley Field on a day with the wind blowing out. So perhaps he'll have the same kind of luck today. And there's a look at the six foot one, 165 pound Dominican, Manny Ibar. He's got a pretty good chance to be a good pitcher, although he hasn't shown a great deal of that this year. He's got a pretty decent fastball, a slider to go with it. And he throws very few changeups. And before the game, they had a ceremony for Ryan Sandberg commemorating his final day in a Chicago Cubs uniform. And the fans here paying homage to. A man who has served so long and illustrious in that Cub uniform. All the Cub fans here to say goodbye today and they're talking to Rhino before the game. He's not sure yet if he's up for just one at bat, two at bats. I think a lot of it will depend on how that first at bat goes. But we know that this is it for Rhino today and uh, some conjecture on it. Whether or not he'll be able to pull a Ted Williams homer on his final at bat, that would be terrific. When Ernie Banks hung it up, he went uh, one for three in his final game. His last at bat was a pop out. And we'll see if Ryan Sandberg can uh, take it up on what Ernie Banks was able to do back in 1971. Robin Jennings is the first Cub batter today at 0 and 1. One ball one strike Jennings starting in center and leading off for the second time in this series and last time out Ibar went against Cincinnati threw the ball well five hits in six innings and he allowed just one earned run but the time before that against Pittsburgh he gave up four homers in five innings and the Cubs have six left hand batters in the lineup to face the young right hander. I can recall a more lefty dominated lineup that the Cubs have floated out there this year. There are actually five lefties in a row at one point in the order. Three balls and two strikes account to Robin Jennings. Again the Cubs with 68 wins coming in. That's what the San Francisco Giants had at the end of last year 68 wins and boy did they turn it around here in 97. Down goes Jennings. Ibar fires a fastball by him. And Ryan Sandberg will be coming up. I'm sure he'll get a great ovation. Ibar is a power pitcher, and you have to look for the hard slider and basically the hard fastball, and he just threw the fastball by him. Ryan Sandberg savoring this moment you would hope it might be his last at bat. We'll wait and see how uh, Rhino wants to play it today. There's the numbers for this 97 season his final season in what will be a Hall of Fame career. 
Ball and a strike to count by the Sandberg right now. His lifetime fielding percentage of 989. That's the best all time of any second baseman ever to have played the game. Only second baseman ever with nine gold glove awards. Can't get that one. It's one and two. Ibar originally signed as a non-drafted free agent out of the Dominican Republic back on October 21st of 1991. He was a lot smaller and a lot lighter in those days. Sandberg with a chopper. Luis Ordaz throws him out two down in the first inning. Hopefully Rhino will hang around for another couple of bats. It's been incredible to see the outpouring of love for Ryan Sandberg, especially on the road. We knew that uh, we were going to have our emotions played with a little bit of Wrigley, but to go into a Houston or a St. Louis and see how Rhino still is received, it's remarkable even though he's really done a lot of damage to the Cardinals over the course of his career in that <laughs> Cub uniform. And they certainly do respect him all over baseball. First pitch strike pumped in there to Mark Grace and Grace in with a 320 batting average. He will finish in the top 10 again this year. I guess one of the questions is will Larry Walker hit number 50 today. He's stuck on 49. They'll have a chance to do that. Rockies play the Dodgers today in that finale. There's a strike one and two to Grace. Well, there's never been a season with three 50 plus home run guys. McGuire and Griffey are up there. Let's see if Walker can get there later today. He's going to finish one, two, three in the uh, triple crown categories. First in homers in the league. Second in batting average, it looks like. Third in RBI. Count is full to Grace. Nobody on two out just underway here in St. Louis. Nineteen ninety has been a great decade for those 50 or more home run hitters. Nineteen seventies George Foster was the only guy to uh, have 50 or more. He had 51. Nobody did it in the 1980s. But look at all these guys in the 90s. And bear in mind next year the expansion year. And so that should open the door for another offensive onslaught. Mark Grace draws the walk, which normally would bring up Sammy Sosa again. Sammy is not in the starting lineup today. Jim Riggleman says that is at Sammy's request, although Sosa will get probably an at bat maybe two this afternoon. Grace draws walk number 87. That's already a career high, and he far and away leads the ball club in that department. Next closest to him is 45, drawn by Sammy Sosa. Day off for Sammy. Grant Brown takes a strike. Sosa had started all 161 games until today. That ball rifled the right to third. Gary Gaetti, who normally kills the Cubs with his bat. This time stings them with, with the glove and he makes a nice play to end the first inning. It'll be the Shields, Plantier and Mark McGuire in the bottom of the first. There's no score. Is that a new big king? No, it's a bag, coach. No, in the bag, son. Yes, sir, it is. Well, what's a smart kid like you doing sitting on the bench? Get him there and play quarterback. Really? Like taking candy from a baby. The new Big King from Burger King. Flame broiled with 75% more beef. It's like a Big Mac, except it's bigger and tastes better. And right now, you can get one for just 99 cents. Coach said I could play halfback. Excuse me. Want to buy this Bud Light ball? Why? Hit it. You'll see. Nice shot. Ooh, what do we have here? For the great taste, it won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light, Chicago. Where's my... I can't miss! John Lithgow performs the Discover Card Dive Along song. An extemporaneous piece. 
Provided for your dialing pleasure, while you call 1-800-IT-PAYS-2 and apply for your Discover card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always pays you back. That was a nice surprise. And that's music to everyone's ears. It pays to discover. To apply, call 1-800-IT-PAYS-2. Accepted where you see the Nova sign. Mark McGuire getting set to bat against Steve Traxel. The Cardinals coming up this way. Delano DeShields at the top of the order. Then Phil Plantier. And Mark McGuire with that Wonder Boy bat. 57 home runs for the season. Ray Langford, Gary Gaetti, Dimitri Young, Eli Marrero, Luis Ordaz, and Manny Ibar to finish it up. the Pepsi defense for Jim Riggleman and the Cubs Brown Jennings and Kishnick left to right in the infield Hanson Alexander Sandberg and Grace and a battery of Tyler Houston and Steve Traxel he's seven and four lifetime against St. Louis the 343 ERA in 13 games and this year one and one against him in three starts the 31 home runs allowed that's got to be very appealing to Mark McGuire although when McGuire face tracks back at Wrigley Field he managed just a one for three to one on a windblown pop up. Strike one to Delino to Shields. Names quietly put together a great year. Fifty five stolen bases to go with the numbers you just saw. And the Cardinals have a three million dollar option on the services of the Shields. They figure to certainly have him back next year. The Shields has always hit Traxel very well. Well, the whole top of this order yesterday for St. Louis. You talk about production. You're looking at eight for 11 from the top third of the batting order yesterday. Seven runs scored, 11 runs batted in, and four stolen bases. Even McGuire had a stolen base. <laughs> Cardinals stole six bases off Tyler Houston. Tyler's back out there today. They count two and two to the Shields. And he has said if he's back, he says, I will steal as many bases as McGuire hits home runs. That's his promise. Might be getting a chance to run here in just a moment. Count goes to three and two. The shield has swiped 55 this year. He needs two more to tie McGuire. Base hit left center for Delano DeShield. Steve Traxel quoted earlier this year saying everybody's hitting my good pitches and it was suggested by one writer today maybe he needs to throw some bad pitches if that's the case because uh, the ERA this year for Traxel has been fluffed up to 4.6 last year it was 3.03 and Mark McGuire getting ready in the on deck circle and Traxel you know will keep a close eye on the shields he's got a great move to first base. So if Delano takes some liberties, at least on the lead, he could pick him off. Bill Plantier. Bunting and it's foul. It was caught by Bob Davidson, showing some good hands. I guess the one thing that Traxel has done very well this year picking it up even from last year he's striking out a lot of guys leads the team with 157 and the Cubs have set an all time franchise record this year in terms of strikeouts from their pitching staff well Delano DeShield certainly has picked it up last year he hit 224 for a full season with the Dodgers coming over here as a free agent he's put together a magnificent season for St. Louis. 70 point hike that's pretty good that one fades away to Plantier if the Shields has a four for four day today he'll be a 300 hitter and to, to do that after hitting in the mid 220s last year that'll be remarkable Plantier doesn't run particularly well and so this cries out for a double play situation maybe Riggs will use a pitch out here trying to combat the shield Speaking of Jim Riggleman one change on his coaching staff announced before the game if you missed it Marco Oliveras will not be coming back next year Tom Gamboa will be joining the major league staff he was uh, 
in the minor league system this year as a coordinator. There is a strike from Traxel, one and two. We certainly want to wish Marco Oliveira as well. Great guy and uh, very well respected in baseball circles. I'm sure he will get another job to his liking. Good move to first, diving into Shields. That was very close with Frank Bully on the call. I like the audible buzz that goes through the stands when McGuire comes to bat. Pretty exciting. He is next, right after Plantier gets done. Solid shot, one hopped by Alexander. Sandberg turns it to Grace, and a nifty double play. Alexander to Sandberg, and back to Gracie at first. So McGuire will come up, trying to hit one out solo. Pretty good play by Manny Alexander. Then Ryan Sandberg turns it easily. So for the fifth time this year, Plantier grounds into the double play. And a great hand for Mark McGuire. You might have seen Ken Griffey Jr. inserting himself in the leadoff spot in the order a couple days ago to get an extra at bat. Mark McGuire said, not for me, thank you. Tony La Russa did float that idea by the slugger, but he said, no, that, that's not the way I want to do it. If it happens, it happens, but I don't want any special treatment. Traxel stays away here. McGuire actually very happy that he has a little protection behind him. He said it's the first time it's ever happened in his career. He was protecting everybody else in Oakland. Now he's got Langford, who is a home run hitter behind him. Traxel skips that one up there, and every time a Cub a pitcher threw one out of the strike zone yesterday, there was booing at Bush Stadium. Looks like we're on a similar course today. One more home run by McGuire. He'll tie the all-time record for right-hand hitters. Home runs in one season. Takes, and it's three and one. Hitters count. We have to credit McGuire. He doesn't swing at pitches out of the strike zone very often, and he did take the three walks yesterday. Got two pitches in the zone and hit him out. Checks his swing, and he draws the walk. They react like Steve Traxel kicked him in the head. <laughs> Somebody wanted to know if uh, McGuire courts his forearms. See the size of those things? It just seems like it. These look like tree trunks. Looks a little like your waist, Josh. <laughs> Here's Ray Langford now. And yeah, it is uh, kind of scary to think about next year. McGuire, as you said, Stoney, he's always been the protector instead of the protectee. The Oakland lineup, he was always protecting at Canseco. Langford, 31 home runs, hitting behind McGuire's 57. One and one the count to the Cardinal center fielder. McGuire, two for two in stolen bases. Gracie doesn't think he's a threat. He's playing behind him. How many guys in that 57-2 club? <laughs> I think it's just McGuire. Sammy Sosa, by the way, will not get that 30-30 season. He will uh, fall short on the stolen base side of it. But 36 home runs. And he's tied a career RBI high, 119. Langford rips one to right. Base hit, McGuire stops at second. Well, there is no doubt that Langford does give McGuire some protection. This is a fork ball, and he just goes down and gets it. It's hit so hard, McGuire has to advance only to second. That leaves it up to noted Cub killer this year, Gary Gaetti. Willie McGee is not in the lineup. That's good news. He's hit everything in sight, and Willie hitting an even 300. So he'll probably be sitting on that today. Steve Traxel shouldn't take those numbers personally because Gaetti's done that to every Cub pitcher this year. 
This time the grounder to third vacuumed up. Dave Hansen throws across and the inning is over. So the Cardinals with a couple of hits, a McGuire walk, but they do not score. Will play the second in St. Louis. Once you enter the witness protection program, you'll disappear. Here's your new passport, driver's license, and keys. New house, new car. Mr. Simons. Happy trails to you. Transitions lenses. Outdoors, they get darker faster. Indoors, clearer. And Transitions lenses are thinner and more comfortable than regular glass or plastic lenses. So you feel and look better. It's a new day. It's a new day in eye care with Transitions lenses. Cubs and Cardinals on the final day of the 1997 season. Josh Lewin with Steve Stone. And thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, for the entire season, Cub fans hanging in there. What has been a very dismal 1997 season, but Cub fan resiliency gets proved again. Nearly 2.2 million jamming at uh, Wrigley this year. Pretty impressive stuff. Here's Dave Hansen taking a strike. And you talk to the players, you talk to the coaching staff, you talk to everybody around the Cubs. I think everybody's just ready to turn the page on 97. We talked earlier, Stoney, about the Giants last year being stuck on 68 wins like the Cubs are right now. You make the right moves in the offseason, you got a chance to do something special. Well, not only the offseason, but in season. That trade with the White Sox really helped put them over the top with Wilson Alvarez, Danny Darwin, Roberto Hernandez. They got Terry Mulholland. So it certainly did help them out. In holding off the Dodgers. One, two to Hansen called strike three. Ibar gets his first strikeout. Giants and Padres did a flip flop from this year to last, last year to this. One team was first, one team was last. And then they turned it around. The Giants will end up with the Marlins in the first round of the playoffs. And this is how Steve Stone scouts it out there at the bottom. San Francisco, the fine bullpen. But boy, Kevin Brown, that's a pretty nice advantage for Florida to have. And Kevin Brown has just manhandled that San Francisco lineup. They've been able to do nothing with him. But the playoffs, a different animal. Tyler Houston bangs one on the ground to short. Luis Ordaz throws him out. Well, that's got the makings of a good series for San Francisco, high on emotion right now. The Dodgers, too little, too late there in Denver. They really did themselves in. Around the middle of September, but uh, the Giants with a lot of dramatic comeback wins. Can they carry that over into the postseason? And meantime, in the other division series, they got the Houston Astros finally in the playoffs again for the first time in 11 years, facing a team that has been there quite a bit in the 1990s, Atlanta. And the key for Houston will be to split those first two games in Atlanta. If they can get a split, they can be in pretty good shape. And they're sending three pretty good starters to the mound. They've got Kyle. Hampton and Reynolds. Kieschnick rips one in a right center. That's in there for a hit. And Brooks Kieschnick. Though it's not a milestone that is going to be talked about a lot. He is uh, up to a 200 batting average. And that's a lot better than 195. When Brooks gets one out over the plate. He likes to extend his arms. If he can get it out there, he's strong enough to be a pretty good hitter. Doug Glanville not playing today because he's there at a 300 average. You don't think Kieschnick's coming out to protect his 200, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I 
course, guys like Brooks wondering what's uh, at hand this offseason. The expansion draft coming up, and uh, the Cubs have a lot of outfield talent. Guys that were at AAA a lot this year. The Robin Jennings, Brooks Kieschnick, Pedro Valdez, Brant Brown, four-headed monster. I mean, those are some decent prospects, but can you protect all four of them? No. Manny Alexander takes, and it's one and one. So, yeah, guys like Kieschnick, Tyler Houston, Jose Hernandez, those guys will be wondering, will they be among the top 15 protected? Or will they be exposed and have a chance to go to either Tampa Bay or Arizona? Well, the big question is, it might come down to Brand Brown and Jose Hernandez, who you're going to protect. That's a tough decision. You saw the numbers in September for Manny Alexander. Offensively, he's turned it on. Defensively, though, erratic. And uh, yesterday, forgetting that there wasn't a force play on at third base, cost the team a big inning. This one lifted into foul ground. McGuire and Marrero looking for it, but it's out of play. Yeah, next year among the changes, we'll see the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And the advantage they're going to have is they've had two years to work on their minor league system. That's the first time an expansion club has ever had the advantage of doing that. On three and two with the runner in motion. Alexander pops it to McGuire. That will be the inning. Cubs failed to score against Manny Ibar. And now the bottom of the second coming up. Cubs nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Reno and his students make headlines. That's F-R-E-N-O. Make sure you don't put two N's in it. My mom would have a fit. But the truth may get him fired. You wrote the story. Well, you published it without my permission. Yeah, but... You wrote the story. And all new Freno. Then on the Parenthood, Zarius found Mr. Right. Me? You know, this guy doesn't seem like Zarius type. Aren't that light on my feet? Those aren't your feet, those are mine. And all new Parenthood after Freno. Tonight at 6 on WGN. Brooks Brothers' latest eyewear. Tailored in about an hour at Lens Crafters. The Brooks Brothers event, on now at Lens Crafters. Low interest. Cash back. Low lease. You want a new minivan, and we want to sell you one. It's that simple. At Chrysler and Plymouth, we want what you want. And now, during the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance, there are big savings on the minivan you want. Get $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Town & Country, or save on Plymouth Voyager, the lowest priced minivan you can buy. Savings on the biggest selection of award-winning minivans. The Chrysler and Plymouth Model Year Clearance. Because we want what you want. It's that simple. Yeah, have I got season tickets for you. You only reserve seats out here. You're charging skybox prices for this? It's buying the foul pole. Have a little faith here. Ooh, what do we have here? No more missing the game. No more flagging down vendors. I'll take it. Play ball. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light, Chicago. Scram! Bad dog! Now the 10-time All-Star, 9-time Gold Glover, Ryan Sandberg, playing in his final game. And Jim Riggleman did not want to presuppose how it would go today, how many innings Ryan would play. He's leaving that up to Ryan. And Ryan really had nothing to say about his plans before the game, he said he'd just kind of take it as it comes today. So we'll find out just like you when Ryan Sandberg has taken the field for the last time. Dimitri Young takes a strike in the bottom of the second underway, no score. Young with a big cut and quickly drops behind 0-2. Speaking of big cuts, Albert Bell apparently has taken one, and he will not be sub-30 home runs this year. He's got number 30 today. And a former Cub, Jerome Walton, back in the lineup for Baltimore. He hits a home run today, number two for the season. Orioles heading into the playoffs against Seattle. 
as Young goes down on strike. Steve Traxel striking out his 158th batter of the year. This is a split finger away from Young. He just swings through it. Good pitch by Traxel. Now the young catcher Eli Marrero had a great year at Triple A. Be careful with Marrero up. Well, he's shown he likes to go back through the middle, especially if you keep the ball out over the plate away from him. So when you deliver the ball, you got to be ready for it to come right back to you. Mark Grace in foul ground. He'll handle that two down. We were talking about that Baltimore-Seattle series. How do you scope that one out, Stoney? Well, I like the fact that you've got Randy Johnson, but you have a bad bullpen, and the bullpen for Atlanta has been just wonderful. That's their big advantage. But when you have to face Johnson twice in the series and deal with the power in that lineup, you have to give the advantage to Seattle, and they're my pick to come out of the American League and go to the World Series. Me too. All right, who's your pick out of the National League? My pick out of the National League is the Atlanta Braves. I'll be different. I'll go with the Florida Marlins in a seven-game NLCS against the Braves. This had to be different. I like Seattle in that Baltimore series, too. Griffey, of course, swinging the bat extremely well. And uh, beyond Johnson, you've got Moyer and Facero. There's Houston and Atlanta and how they match up. You like those uh, killer bees, I know, for the Astros. Well, it's going to get done. It'll get done with Biggio and Bagwell. Perhaps a little help from Bell. There's a base hit by Luis Ordaz in the left field. Third hit of the afternoon for St. Louis. And, of course, with Atlanta, you have to look at the starting pitching. That's where it all starts. Obviously, they're going to score enough runs if those starting pitchers can shut down the opposition. But if you get into that bullpen and you can get in there around the sixth or seventh inning before they can get to Wohlers, Houston can make it pretty tough on them. And remember, they've got the last three in their ballpark. And it's difficult for any team to win in that Astrodome, as the Cubs found <laughs> out this year. <laughs> they sure did. Ivar. A former shortstop strokes one foul. He was only a changed over two pitcher four years ago. So you figure he knows how to handle the bat a little bit. Well, he's got a very good arm. What he has to learn, Josh, is to take something off. Right now, he's strictly a power pitcher. Hard fastball, hard slider. And that's one of the challenges for Dave Duncan to get him an off-speed pitch during the winter. I think one of the challenges for baseball, you were talking about the Houston Atlanta series. Find a way to reward the Atlanta Braves. They won 17 more games than the Houston Astros this year, but they've got a home field disadvantage. Well, we're hoping they do away with the three out of five at the beginning. Little tapper. That'll get in a right for a base hit, or Dodd stops at second base. So some two out trouble brewing at the bottom of the lineup here. The Cardinals put two on for Delano DeShields. That's the third hit of the year for Ibar. Cup fans join Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, Kevin Ory, Andre Dawson, and a host of Cup players and celebrities for the 13th Annual Cubs Convention, January 16th through the 18th at the Chicago Hilton and Tower, sponsored by Pepsi. Take part in autograph and photo sessions, baseball clinics, seminars, and much more. For hotel reservations, call the Hilton at 312-922-4400, or for more information, call 773-404-CUBS. Two on, two out, and Delano DeShields getting closer to a 300 batting average. And he has dominated Steve Traxel, 13 for 28 against him in his career. Well, there was some hot and heavy recruiting by Cincinnati and St. Louis for the services of DeShields. St. Louis won out. St. Louis also, a couple of years ago, went very hard after both Craig Biggio and Mark Grace. And had Biggio signed with St. Louis, it was speculated Grace would have come here also. When Biggio went back to Houston, Grace went back to the Cubs. And of course, the Cubs are very happy that it worked out that way. So is Houston. Three balls and no strikes to the Shields. Yeah, Mark Grace, a lot of speculation. Will he be back? A lot of folks saying that maybe you could trade Mark Grace. I know a lot of Cub fans say, don't even think about it. 
The shields the ground ball to Sandberg. Throws to Graves and that'll do it. Two men stranded again for the Cardinals. They've left four on through two innings and will play the third. Sandberg due up in the inning. No score. a new minivan and we want to sell you one it's that simple at chrysler and plymouth we want what you want and now during the chrysler and plymouth model year clearance there are big savings on the minivan you want get a thousand dollars cash back on chrysler town and country or save on plymouth voyager the lowest price minivan you can buy savings on the biggest selection of award-winning minivans the chrysler and plymouth model year clearance because we want what you want it's that simple Cubs fans, now you can show off your pride with merchandise from the official Cubs gift catalog, like official Cubs jackets, jerseys, shirts, and hats. To get your free copy of the Cubs gift catalog, visit the Cubs website at www.cubs.com or call 773-404-CUBS. There's Margaret Sandberg, Ryan's wife, the dark-haired beauty with the sunglasses on right there in the middle of the screen. and. Back to Arizona after this game is over. Ryan Sandberg, Margaret Sandberg will, I guess, have uh, some time now to watch the kids play some ball, help them with their homework and all that fun stuff. But around spring training, even though you have retired, your body doesn't know it, and Rhino's going to get the itch to do something. And hopefully he'll wind up back in the game. It was that very itch that uh, drove him back into baseball the first time that he announced his retirement of course that didn't last nearly as long as he thought it would Traxel sends one of the shortstop nice pick by Ordaz he fires a pellet across to McGuire to get Traxel kids call 1888 Cubs fan and become a member of the Halo Chicago Cubs kids club and join and receive an official membership card along with Cubs cap, sunglasses, calculator, notebook, pen, two tickets to a future Cubs game, and much more. That's the Halo Chicago Cubs Kids Club at 1888 Cubs Fan. Call and join today. Robin Jennings getting set to step in there for the Cubs. And uh, Stoney, we've gone through every playoff matchup so far, except for one. It's, I think, the one that has potential to be the most even and the most interesting. The Indians and the Yankees, they played during the regular season. And uh, one team outscored the other 71 to 70. That's pretty even. Indians have got to find some way to get that pitching staff back on track because it's been the pitching staff that kept the White Sox and Milwaukee close all year. The Yankees, well, they have been there and they have the experience. And if they have David Cohn healthy, it's going to be tough for the Indians. All right, so let's go on record here. I know you like the Braves. I like the Yankees to beat Cleveland. Okay. And then I like Seattle to beat the Yankees. Well, Seattle hitting, what, 264 home runs now. Major League record for the regular season. I like you. I like Seattle coming out of the American League. I'll take, uh, who are you taking, the Yankees in the uh, Indian Series? I like the Yankees. I'll take the Indians. Okay. Just want to be that way, you know? We can, we can bet a dinner for next year. I, of course, will take you to a fancy restaurant, and you can make <laughs> your plans for Burger King if I win. <laughs> well, why do you think I'd just take you there? Jennings smokes one into center field. Langford back forth. There is the second out. I'll take better care of you than that. I'll take you to one of your restaurants. Uh, thank you. Who do you like in the MVP? National League. 
Larry Walker from the league. Larry yeah, Walker Larry Walker. feel the same way. With probably Mike Piazza a close second. That's Perhaps how I would do it too. Bagwell and Biggio getting some consideration. Rhino getting his second at bat. He rolled out his first time. This has a chance to be Rhino's last at bat. Conjecture is he will not play the entire game, but again, what's up in the air is whether he will have two at bats, three at bats today. That's what everybody's talking about. Sandberg and McGuire this afternoon. Saying goodbye to a lot of special players this year. Eddie Murray probably will be playing his last year. Lee Smith, Brett Butler, Terry Pendleton, Greg Gagne, probably. Ryan Sandberg is uh, probably, uh, no, I mean, no offense to the other guys on that list. But uh, obviously in Chicago, this is the guy they're, they're focusing on. And it'll be interesting because five years from the date of retirement for both Eddie Murray and Ryan Sandberg, they will be voted on together for the Hall of Fame. And Eddie's numbers are just staggering. One of the most powerful switch hitters in the history of the game. I got to believe next year, however, Don Sutton has got to go into the Hall of Fame. 324 wins. You would think that next year would be his year. I just hope it's the year for Santa. Sandberg punches one foul. You and I have talked about it off and on, but Santa and Sutton, I think we agree, are one, two on the all time snub list as of right now for the Hall of Fame. No doubt about that. And hopefully Ronnie will be able to get voted in before he moves to the Old Timers Committee. I'm sure that if he's not voted in by the sports writers when he does move to the old timers committee they will definitely put him in the hall of fame I don't think there's any doubt about that two balls two strikes account to Sandberg I think yes most Cub fans they say that should have happened 10 years ago Ronnie getting in there but hopefully Ryan Sandberg will be a first ballot guy he has certainly got the statistical fodder for that to happen this one punched in the air to center and it sends Langford back at the wall, he has got it. Boy, Rhino gave it a rip. That would have been a memorable way to end it. The Hall of Fame career. Langford catches up to it at the Budweiser sign. We will go to the bottom of the third. Still no score. The companions are here, but what on earth do they want? Gene Roddenberry's Earth Final Conflict. Premiering October 18th. Remember, Mr. Pearson, once you enter the witness protection program, you'll disappear. Here's your new passport, driver's license, and keys. New house, new car. Mr. Simons. Happy trails to you. And best of all, ooh, what do we have here? But right. <laughs> we'll, we'll take, take it. it. It's a deal. For the great taste <laughs> that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light, Chicago. Ooh, what do we have here? Wait. Where you always make more money. <laughs> <laughs> Join Honorary Chairman Harry Carey, Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, Andre Dawson, and a host of Cubs players and coaches for the 13th Annual Cubs Convention, January 16th through the 18th at the Chicago Hilton and Towers, sponsored by Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy autograph and photo sessions, hitting and pitching clinics, special events just for kids, and much more. It's the greatest off-season event in all of baseball. For more information, call the Cubs Convention hotline at 773-404-CUBS. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by the Discover Card, proud partner of the Smithsonian's 150th anniversary. Well, as we get to the bottom of the third, Miguel Cairo is coming onto the field, and this is it, ladies and gentlemen, for Ryan Sandberg. His last at bat was a deep fly ball you just saw to center field. Ryan Sandberg's career is now over.
standing ovation now here in St. Louis. Appropriately, Rhino ending his career against a team against which he's had so much success. Those will be the final numbers. And he comes out and he doffs his cap. Ryan Sandberg. We'll miss you, Rhino. And as expected, he does uh, hang out there today for just a couple at bats. The trivia question can now be answered. Who was the last guy ever to face him? Manny Ibar. And the last at bat is a very deep fly ball, appropriately enough, in front of the Budweiser sign out there in left center. And the other trivia question that will be asked and now answered, Miguel Cairo is a man that took his place, if only for today. Bill Plantier lost one in the air to left. There's Grant Brown, and now the fans will stand and cheer again, not because of what just happened there, but because of what might happen right now. Mark McGuire is coming up. Fifty seven home runs. And right now he is alone at 57. Of course he'd have company at 58. Babe Ruth has had a 59 and a 60. And with every pitch out of the strike zone the fans here in St. Louis booing Steve Traxel. Who by the way folks is trying to get the ball over the plate. Drops one in on the inside corner. It's one and one to big Mark McGuire. There's where McGuire he is in the rankings right now. Still a couple more at bats to go for him. Up over top of that one. It's one and two. And still the only man in the history of the game to hit at least 20 home runs in both leagues in the same season. One and two and here it comes. Strike three. He took it. It was a real nice pitch. Now McGuire yesterday, nothing but walks and homers. Today, a walk and a strikeout. And let's quickly pause for station identification. This is WGN TV, Chicago, America's number one sports station. With Steve Stone and producer-director Arnie Harris, Josh Lewin in St. Louis. We appreciate you joining us for this, the final game of the 1997 season. And I hope you are, as we are, looking forward to 98. Not a lot of fun to look back. The rearview mirror, I want to take a sledgehammer to that sucker. <laughs> looking back, no fun here in 97, but everybody's hoping 98 will be exciting. Harry's coming back. And uh, Ryan Sandberg, of course, will not be back. We have seen his last at bats just a few minutes ago. Traxel to Langford, and it's two and one. And that's what the offseason is going to be all about, trying to figure out who else is in and out of the Cub plans. Well, you have to fill a few holes, and you have to change things around, and... I'm sure that the Cub brass doesn't have to be reminded that in this day and age of free agency and drafts, you can go from worst to first rather easily. And they need look no further than way out west to see the San Francisco Giants and what they did with a remake of their ball club, anchored with one powerful home run hitter. They added Jeff Kent. They couldn't have figured he'd drive in 120, but drive them in he did. And anchored by Barry Bonds, they will go on to the postseason. On three and two, Langford, and this ball smothered by Cairo. Great play, and he throws him out. So the Cardinals down in order, an inning that saw McGuire strike out. Also an inning that started in the top of uh, the third with Ryan Sandberg playing for his last time. At the end of three, no score. 
Frino's getting written up by the principal. That's F-R-E-N-O. Make sure you don't put two N's in it. My mom would have a fit. Tonight at 6 on WGA. Fares, more possibilities on Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Universal Commodity Special Report on Heating Oil has the answers you need to take advantage of a projected major move in oil prices. Did you know the U.S. imports more than half its oil from foreign countries? And that emerging superpowers like China will soon be in direct competition with us for steadily dwindling foreign oil reserves? Call Universal today to get the information on this exciting investment opportunity. Call 1-800-444-2567 to get your complete investment package on heating oil. Market conditions change rapidly. Don't delay. Call 1-800-444-2567 and find out how with a 10-cent Move in your option premium, a $6,000 investment in heating oil options has the potential for results of $20,000 or more. The proceeding was a mathematical leverage example and does not imply that clients have or will achieve similar returns. Heating oil is in short supply. Now is the time to make your move. Call 1-800-444-2567 to get your free videotape on options. With profit potentials this large, there is a corresponding level of risk. Call 1-800-444-2567. Get the special report on heating oil and your free videotape on options. That's 1-800-444-2567. First time all year, Sammy Sosa's not in the starting lineup. Jim Riggleman has said he will get in a bat or two at some point in the game today. First, Mark Grace, he takes up and away. Manny Ibar looking pretty good so far. He's allowed just one hit. That was to Brooks Kieschnick in the second inning. Ibar not used to going too deep into ball games. 11 starts, 62 innings, so he's averaged five plus innings per start. Grace rockets one to left, but there's Plantier. He's got it. Treat yourself to your favorite Cub fan to Vine Line. The Cubs monthly newspaper, Vine Line, provides a year round package of Cubs coverage for fans nationwide. Subscription rates start at just $19.95. All two years subscribers receive a free photo of their name in lights on Wrigley Field's marquee. Call 773-404-CUBS to order. That's 773-404-CUBS. Brand Brown steps in, and he wanted to say hello to all of his friends and family back in Porterville, California. Says, I'll be home in a week. Well, I guess they're getting ready. Got the parade route all mapped out. Very proud man of his hometown is Brand Brown. The Nissan trivia question. Last pitcher to lead his league in wins while pitching for a last place team. I'll say Steve Carlton in 72. 72 but yeah. There might have been somebody before that, but I'll I'll stick with Carlton. I'd be wrong, of course, but <laughs> well, Kurt Schilling had a shot this year for a while. Brown with a rip, and he's down on strikes. Did it say National League or American League? Or both? Just National? Yeah. Well. I pass. Carlton's the only one I can think of that 72 season. How's that for wimping out? In character, certainly, <laughs> but... <laughs> Two balls, no strikes to Dave Hansen here. We were talking about the surprises, Stoney. You mentioned Jeff Kent. Another Jeff, Jeff Shaw with Cincinnati. Really just a phenomenon. 42 saves for a guy that was worried about holds last year for Jeff Brantley. When Brantley went down to arm surgery, Shaw was pressed into service and saved 42 games. That's a miraculous season. Ball for Dave Hansen is on with a two out walk. Shaw's at the top of the list. The Cardinals Dennis Eckersley has blown a bunch of saves this year but still has uh, 36 up there on the toad board. Rod Beck his 37th yesterday. How about Randall Kirk Myers over in the other league. 
what is he, 43 for 44, something like that? I think 44 for 45, maybe? Something in that neighborhood. I know he's just missed one opportunity. Well, what's interesting with the San Francisco situation, they've got uh, Beck and Hernandez both as free agents. They're not going to re-sign both of them. So somebody's going to be out there and available. Which one it is, obviously, we don't know yet. How about the comeback player of the year? That's something to think about that I haven't spent too much time on. Well, it, it depends on where your starting point is. I mean, Kevin Tappan, he's got my vote. If you say that he didn't pitch all year, then suddenly, at the end of July, went 9-3 and three the rest of the way. If, if that can qualify, I give it to Tappan. Pop-up by Tyler Houston, and we'll pick up on this point. Assuming this pop-up is caught, and it is, we'll pick it up in the bottom of the fourth inning. With the Cubs and the Cardinals still looking for a run, no score in St. Louis. You want to fight back? Join us. Coming this fall, one of the most highly anticipated series of the new season. Lost for 20 years, his legacy to the world will finally be revealed. From the creator of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry's Earth Final Conflict. Premiering October 18th on WGN. Starting Monday night at 10 on WGN. Budweiser withstood the test of time. It has over 120 year heritage. That heritage is there for one simple reason. Because of the people behind the brand Budweiser and most importantly because quality was never compromised. Beer is like a food and just like any natural food with no additives and preservatives, fresh food does indeed taste better. A beer is the best it will ever be when it leaves the brewery. You can look exactly at how fresh Budweiser is through our Born On dating system. It tells you when that product was made and how fresh that product is in the marketplace. There's a lot of pride and tradition in the beer business, and that's what we're about. We're about people, about families, and about selling the highest quality beer products in the world. Cubs and the Cardinals into the bottom of the fourth inning. Josh Lewin with Steve Stone. As the Cubs put a capper on this 1997 season, we were talking about the comeback player of the year candidates. Who do you like? Jeff Blauser would be my guy. He played 83 games last year, was injured a good portion of the season, and came back to hit over 300 this year and was hitting 350 or 360 for most of the year. So I would think that that would be the guy. Here's Gary Gaetti, and he has been the guy against the Chicago Cubs all year. This is a fellow who once considered signing as a free agent with the Cubs several years ago. Takes a rip at this one, and he fouls it. The Nissan trivia question. Got to get this thing answered. The last pitcher to lead his league and wins while pitching for a last place team. No. We should have got that. Sut in 87. He led with 18. I guess he did. And the Cubs were indeed last that year, even though Andre Dawson had a magnificent offensive year. So you got, you got the MVP and you got the league leader in wins that year, and they still finished last. He was second in the Cy Young Award voting, I believe, that year. Ten years ago. And uh, well, forward 10 years from there, the Cubs will again finish last. Unfortunately, the personal accolades are not going to be there for a lot of these guys. Gaetti punches one foul. You look around at the uh, league leaders, and really, Sammy Sosa's name is the one that pops up, if at all. Sammy's going to finish, well, depending on whether or not he gets in there today, I thought for sure he was going to finish top five in RBI. Right now, he's slipped to number six at 119 because Mike Piazza's gone off the last week or so. Look at that, Mike Remlinger. Former Dartmouth Big Green. Got a no-hitter through six. 
Dartmouth has sent a few players to the major leagues for a relatively small school. Brad Osmus is uh, one of them, and boy, did he destroy the Cubs the other night. Gaetti to the opposite field. And circling back on it, Brooks Kieschnick finds it for the out, one away. Remember Pete Broberg? Was he a Dartmouth Big Green, too? Yeah, a hard wow. throwing right hander. A guy named Chuck Seelbach out of Cleveland, Ohio. Another hard throwing right hander who played a bit for Detroit. Up in them thar hills. Yeah, up in New England. Well, are we of one mind that it'll be Roland and Garcia Perez, as the rookies of the year? Yes. My mind is your mind. Arnie Harris is completely shocked that we're together on something. And I, I mean, I can't fight you on that. Garcia Parra has got to get a sweep in the American League. I mean, who, who would vote for anybody else? Who else could get voted for? Arnie's still voting for Dave Rosello. Uh -oh. <laughs> One time Cub infield. Uh -oh. <laughs> Jason Dixon, I guess, for a while might have uh, been able to finagle a couple of votes, but. He faded and Nomar Garcia Parra never did. One and two the count to Dimitri Young. Scoreless well, game here. Well, when you have well over 200 hits and you have over 30 home runs or 30 home runs, I would say that qualifies as rookie of the year material. Young taps it to Cairo. Again, Ryan Sandberg out of the game, finishing his career with an 0 for 2 afternoon. Are we also agreed that the Cy Young Award stays north of the border? I've got uh, Roger Clemens and Pedro Martinez from the Jays and the Expos. Well, Roger Clemens, I think, is in pretty good shape for that. Although Randy Johnson will get some consideration. Got his 20th win yesterday. Yes, sir. Here's Eli Marrero. And Traxel pumps in a strike, 0 and 1. Johnson ended with 20 wins. Jamie Moyer had a shot for 18. He was beaten by a former teammate of his, Mike Oquist, his last start. So he ends up 17 and 5. That's still a pretty impressive year for a former Cub. Well, opponents batting average against, and we talk always about Pedro Martinez under 200. Randy Johnson is 194. Wow. Of course, Roger Clemens at 213 is in pretty good shape in that department. I believe Clemens is getting a start today. Clemens is 21 and 7, facing his former team today, the Boston Red Sox. This ball hammered in a right. Eli Marrero has a base hit. That's five hits for the Cardinals. They have stranded four runners already today. Luis Ordaz will be the batter. There are the two boss men, Jim Riggleman, one-time Cardinal coach. He, of course, the Cub manager, Tony La Russa, who has been a manager of the year. He's on the right. La Russa will not be manager of the year this year, not after making the guarantee that his team would finish first. They will finish fourth. Well, Tony had an option to leave this ball club. That's the way his contract was so written, but he has decided to forego that, and he will stay right here in St. Louis. That leads us, I guess, to our final category on Celebrity Jeopardy today. Manager of the Year. Manager of the Year for 400, Alex. Hands down, Dusty Baker. With uh, little consideration for Gene Lamont. And Larry Durker, third. Larry Durker, a distant third, I think. I've got a soft spot for those former players slash broadcast types. Alexander gets it over to second base. The inning is over on the fielder's choice. No runs and a hit, no errors, one left. Go play the fifth and a fast mover, no score. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by the Stars of Chicagoland, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Cub fans making the trip here to St. Louis for the weekend. Right now, the Cubs and Cardinals so far have split the two games and this would be the rubber game it is also of course a final game of 1997 here's Kieschnick 
And Ibar is behind him 1 and 0. Kishnik has the only Cub hit of the afternoon. Strike on the outside corner. If you missed it, Ryan Sandberg 0 for 2, then took himself out of the game. In the bottom of the third, his final at bat was a deep fly ball to center. Big rip there for Kishnik. He's down on the count one and two. He just missed on his final at bat, hitting it out of the ballpark, but it's pretty deep in left center field, about 400 feet. Then he came up a couple of feet short. Too bad we're not at Wrigley. That would have been in the bleachers to end his career. Kishnik lofting this one to left. Plantier in pursuit into the corner. He's got it. Wind is blowing out a little bit today, and the forecast is for it to get windier as the afternoon goes on. If the flag keeps pointing out, that bodes well for Mark McGuire. He'll have another couple of bats today. I don't think he's too concerned about which way the wind is blowing, especially here in St. Louis, where the field sits down actually below street level. Wind doesn't affect it all that much, and when Mark hits him, it really doesn't matter anyway. Five 500 foot home runs this season. That's 500 or more. I mean, that's almost as far as the arch is tall. And they say the average McGuire home run this year has gone about 430 feet. So the old cliche about he's hit that ball a mile, he's hit the ball four and a half miles <laughs> this season. Alexander takes it's two and one. I get the sense that McGuire is going to be relieved in a way when this season is over. Dealing with all the questions every day. Are you going to catch him? Is your hair falling out? How you doing? Everything okay? But he is a very gracious guy. Seems to handle that very well. I think he's done a nice job with all of the pressure trying to tell the folks to talk to some of the other guys on this team. Well, this weekend, he was instructing everybody to go talk to Ryan Sandberg. You said Rhino's the story this weekend, not me. Alexander, a little poked ball heading towards the right field line. It is just foul. And Frank Pulley running out there to make sure everybody knows it. Well, in a very forgettable 1997 season, this last weekend certainly has had its drama and emotion between McGuire and Sandberg. The interesting little subplot the other day with uh, Jim Riggleman and Sammy Sosa yelling at each other in the dugout. I think Jim might be trying to set the trend for next year. And the fact that personal numbers are good, and there's no doubt that this game is built on personal numbers, but... The team concept, first and foremost, is what you have to look for, and I think Jim was trying to convey that to Sammy in a not-too-subtle way. Alexander could not restrain himself there. He's down on strikes. Good hard slider by Ibar. And he's shown pretty good stuff today. This one bending low and away. Manny cannot check his swing. Bob Davidson rings him up, and I would assume last day of the season, anything close, <laughs> and you're on the bench. Draxel bounced out in the third. 0 for 1, and now 6 out of 59 for the year, but he's got three doubles. And he's got a base hit. Rips it right over shortstop. Steve Traxel, who, by the way, is also working on a shutout this afternoon. Be nice to see Trax get that ninth win of the year. Kevin Taffany was able to get that the other night. Now Traxel's going to have to face Mark McGuire. <laughs> Maybe Mark, next inning. Mark's saying, you going to lay one in for me? <laughs> he says, probably not. <laughs> At least not on purpose. Well, I'm moving back here. If you want to steal second base, get yourself tired out a little bit. Go ahead. <laughs> Traxel knows his history. He says, I don't want to be Tracy Stallard 
part two. I don't want to be the guy that's remembered for giving up a record breaking home run. The pressure's off there. Unless this game goes 53 innings, I think he's going to be okay. 57 home runs for McGuire. Will he finish four shy of the all time record or three or two? Robin Jennings ahead in the count. Two balls to strike. We are scoreless here in the fifth inning. Last day of the year. For the baseball season anyway. This is of course September 28th. <laughs> a few more days yeah. left in the year. I'd say got about a hundred of them matter of fact. And here's Jennings cranking one to left center. Bill Plantier under it. Ends the inning. The Cubs still have not scored against Manny Ibar. Traxel will face Ibar, then to Shields, Plantier, and potentially McGuire as we go to the bottom of inning five. Some people enjoy a good challenge. But earning a frequent flyer ticket shouldn't be one of them. At Southwest Airlines, we count quick trips, not long miles. Just eight round trips is all it takes, and you'll be flying free before you know it. Rapid rewards from Southwest Airlines, the quickest, easiest way to earn free travel. You are now free to move about the country. Low interest. Cash back. Low lease. You want a new minivan, and we want to sell you one. It's that simple. At Chrysler and Plymouth, we want what you want. And now, during the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance, there are big savings on the minivan you want. Get $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Town & Country, or save on Plymouth Voyager, the lowest price minivan you can buy. Savings on the biggest selection of award-winning minivans, the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance. Because we want what you want. It's that simple. Space is no longer safe. Ready, Imperial Commander. Ready, Rebel Commander. In the new Star Wars Galactic Battle, massive fleets of Imperial and Rebel starships trade blows. Imperial Commander, fire. Nothing but it. Victory is not just hit or miss. Put a strategic battle plan into place. Identify. Star Destroyer. Isolate. Meet Mr. Lee. And incinerate your enemy. Electronic yeah. galactic battle with 20 authentic ships. The force in galactic battles. Batteries not included. On Unhappily, Mom croaked. She's back. Time for an exorcism. I'll be happy to help Mom exercise. <laughs> Tonight at 7.30 on WGN. On today's Discover Card Payback Playback, Mark McGuire went deep twice yesterday, giving him 57 this year and placing him sixth on the all-time single-season list. And McGuire today, a walk and a strikeout, so it's 57 and a holding. Cardinals up in the bottom of the fifth with Manny Ibar, the pitcher, former shortstop. And he bunts back to the screen at 0-1. By the way, the Mike Remlinger no-hit bid is over. Jose Vidro has a base hit now for Montreal. Cincinnati still leading, though, 10-zip. Breaking pitch from Traxel in there to make it 0-2. Rockies leading the Dodgers 2-0 in the second inning. The Dodgers, of course, out of it as of yesterday. And the Giants setting off what looked like a pretty intense celebration yesterday with a win. Sellout crowd there or close to it in San Francisco. Saw Brian Sabian with a comment after the game admonishing his fans. He said, what took you guys so long? I was there for a San Francisco-Houston game earlier this month. I mean, both those teams very much in the race. They had 9,000 people there. Ibar almost twisting himself up into a pretzel as he's down on strikes. Draxler has three strikeouts this afternoon. Tonight on WGN, don't miss the two latest shows to hit the Sunday night WB. At 8, Tom Arnold is back in his new comedy, The Tom Show. Then at 8.30, Carol Liefer stars in her latest All Right Already. Two new shows, and the comedy keeps coming. Don't miss the WB on WGN Channel 9. The Shields takes a strike. That was fun. Tom Arnold coming up in the booth with you and Harry the other day. That was very nice. 
pretty good guy in person. I got I got to get him a, a glass of water. One of the highlights of my uh, <laughs> my broadcast career. Very kind of you. Well, he asked for it, and it's the least you could do. That's what I felt. Here's to Shields down to the count, zero and two. So yeah, check that out, and uh, we'd love to tell you when to check out opening day. 1998 here on WGN, but the schedule, of course, is not out yet. Except nobody knows just exactly where anybody's going to be playing <laughs> quite yet. That's one of these small problems right now. They're saying that by mid-October, realignment should be set. Of course, we've been hearing that for a while. That one outside, two and two. At the very least, thank goodness, it looks as though the radical realignment plan is dead. That proposed division of Philadelphia, Oakland, the Cubs, Kansas City, and Minnesota is going by the board. <laughs> Look at Alexander spinning. Great play, but safe to call it first. Frank Pulley says the Shields is safe with his second hit of the day. Many Alexander looks almost like a break dancer as he goes down to get this one, then turns a complete circle and comes up throwing. Off that knee, gets it there Aww. seemingly in time, but Frank Foley says no. Looked like a spectacular play, and it looked like he was out by a half step at first. That's because he was. Come on. And Manny, you had him. Bill Plantier, the batter. And the Shields on the move. Nice throw. And Houston pegs him. Delano DeShields is out stealing or attempting to do so. Well, that was a delayed steal. And it didn't fool anybody. DeShields took off a little bit later. And you see Tyler Houston comes up firing. Manny Alexander is there. And he puts the tag on. There is a Some part of his anatomy uh, put the tag on. <laughs> There's a uh, light rain starting to fall now here in St. Louis. Strike to Plantier makes it one and one. That wasn't supposed to happen. Yes, it was. It, it was? was scheduled to be light rain. Nothing that will affect the ball game. Plantier, hot shot. Alexander grabs it on one short hop. And across it goes, denying McGuire a chance to hit in this inning. He'll be up in the sixth. So will the Cubs. Cairo in for Sandberg to lead it off after this. Oh, you want to see my Discover Card statement? I am very, very prissy. Put up or shut up! I love to be pampered. I go have my hair done. I love to go have my nails done, have pedicures, manicures. My biggest weakness would have to be shoes. Hmm. Cashback bonus award? Really floats my boat. How many credit cards make a statement like that? I am definitely a shopaholic. It pays to discover. Use it where you see the Nova sign. The Michelin X1, with a six-year, unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin confidence in most driving conditions. Because you don't just cover a lot of miles, you cover a lot of weather. If you love chocolate, peanuts, caramel, and especially Reese's peanut butter, good news. Reese's Nutrageous bars are now 20% bigger. Join Honorary Chairman Harry Carey, Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, Andre Dawson, and a host of Cubs players and coaches for the 13th Annual Cubs Convention, January 16th through the 18th at the Chicago Hilton and Towers, sponsored by Pepsi Cola. Enjoy autograph and photo sessions, hitting and pitching clinics, special events just for kids, and much more. It's the greatest off-season event in all of baseball. For more information, call the Cubs Convention hotline at 773-404-CUBS. This copyright telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private and non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or use of the fixtures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is strictly prohibited. Into the sixth inning and now soggy St. Louis. Miguel Cairo in the air to left field for Phil Plantier. One out. Rain picking up a little bit as we get going. Mark Grace will be coming to the plate. Mark Grace. 
What happened to that weather forecast you were talking about? Mine ended up being absolutely wrong. Yours ended up being right. Even the weather forecasts that we watch tend to favor you. You're supposed to get the forecast for St. Louis, not Memphis. Oh. <laughs> Where's Skilling when you need him? These local guys. Oh, boy. Well, you, you obviously saw the right forecast. My guy said a day just like yesterday, sunny, beautiful, might get a little windy later. I saw the one that said rain about the beginning of the sixth inning. Show off. Mark Grace. <laughs> <laughs> with a count of one ball, one strike on him. Brad Brown on deck. Grace came in with a 320 batting average. It's now 319 after a fly out of the fourth inning. Count goes to three and one. Looks like Gracie will be the number six overall hitter in the National League. You know he'd like to get at least one hit today to keep that batting average up over 320. It just looks a little better. This one's going to end up foul. Grace, you know, would like to get to 80 runs batted in as well. But you look back to Mark Grace's most memorable season of 1989. He only had 79 runs batted in that year. That led the Cubs. But of course they went on into the National League Championship Series against the Giants. Here's ground ball to first. And McGuire grabs it in foul ground. That 89 team did so many other things well. Don Zimmer had a career year managing. It seemed like everything he did was perfect. And probably the most memorable part of that year was twice with Grace up. Bases loaded, hit and runs, and they both worked. And anytime you can do that, you know you've got it going. It's when you're in the managerial zone. Grace on base. So to speak, with a walk. Career high in those for him this year. Well, that 89 team, I mean, if you want to think about some of the things that have gone wrong this year that went right in 89. I mean, uh, the, the great production off the bench, we have seen some of that this year with Dave Hansen and Dave Clark. Of course, it was Dwight Smith and uh, McClendon and those guys in 89. Oh, it was also Jerome Walton as a rookie of the year and White Smith number two in the balloting. So a couple of young guys certainly came through for the Cubs. Brant Brown rips one in the right field. Base hit and Grace will rumble around second. He'll dig for third. And Grace is in there. Runners at the corners for the Cubs. Just one out. Well, this is about the time when you'd expect Manny Ibar to start getting a little tired. He's averaged just into the sixth inning, and now with runners at the corners and only one out, the bullpen is indeed up and going. Lefty loosening up in the pen. I think that's going to be Lance Painter. Yep. Now the best scoring chance for the Cubs here. First and third, one out, and Dave Hansen. He's walking the struck out. He's hitting 313. And the bunt. This is going to get the run in. Fantastic. The third suicide squeeze that the Cubs have pulled off this year. That shades of 89. Get something like that to work for you. Cubs have a 1 nothing lead in the sixth inning. Good timing on the part of Mark Grace at third base because Ibar was already into his motion before Grace started coming down the line. And then it's a perfect bunt by Hansen. Driving in his 21st run, the Cubs have the lead. And great execution on the part of Hansen and the great timing on the part of Mark Grace. That's the second suicide squeeze RBI this year for Hansen. Scott Service has one as well. Now Tyler Houston. He's ahead in the count 1-0. Two balls and no strikes account as Painter continues to get loose in the bullpen for St. Louis. Cubs trying to finish up within three games of this St. Louis Cardinal team. Houston rams one in the center. Back goes Lankford. Under it, and that's the inning. But the suicide squeeze brings home the first run of the day. Mark McGuire to lead off for St. Louis now. We're heading to the bottom of the sixth. One nothing Cubs.
WGN is proud to salute Chicago's Latino community during Hispanic Heritage Month. Man, this gray hair makes me look old. Then do what I did. Get rid of it. You were gray? I never knew that. No one can tell you use the remarkable discovery called Just for Men. Simply shampoo in Just for Men, and in five minutes, rinse. It's time-controlled to blend away gray in five minutes without changing your natural color. Even I can't tell what used to be gray. Thanks. Just for Men looks so natural, even friends can't tell. Adolphus Bush went to Germany every summer and spent two to three months touring the hop fields and the fields where the barley is grown in Europe and looking at different breweries. And he wrote a series of letters back to his son. September the 20th, 1897. I would advise that we buy the finest growths of barley as soon as we can. We cannot make fine malt from inferior barley. And we cannot make fine beer from inferior malt. Adolphus Bush to August A. Bush, Sr., September the 20th, 1897. Today's Ameritech Playbook, your link to better communication. Miguel Cairo coming in for Ryan Sandberg at second, and he makes his presence felt immediately. A fine play to his right, makes the throw, and gets him out. And that is your Ameritech Playbook. And this is Mark McGuire leading off in the bottom of the sixth. 57 home runs, looking for 58. <laughs> Hit it here, we'll drop the beer. That, that's a nice thought. Getting inventive with the signs out there in left field. As McGuire rips one foul. John Frascatore loosening up in the bullpen. I would think that Tony La Russa would be very happy to get what he got out of Manny Ibar. Six innings, three hits, just one run. Foul ball, two strikes to Mark McGuire and well, you dial up the matchup, Traxel against McGuire. Nobody's hit more home runs this year than McGuire. Nobody's allowed more home runs in the National League than Steve Traxel. However, Traxel has faced McGuire five times. McGuire has not hit one out. You can get him with some high heat right here. You can throw that right by him. Off speed, hammered to center field. It's got a chance. It is number 58. That ties Jimmy Fox and Hank Greenberg for the all-time record by a right-hand hitter. And Traxel on an 0-2 pitch instead of going to a high fastball went to a curveball. And Mark McGuire put a charge into it to straightaway center. The fans are standing, they're chanting, they want the curtain call from McGuire. He is there. He is at number 58. And joins Greenberg and Fox. There we go. Three right-hand hitters have hit 58 home runs in a year now. Mark McGuire joins very select company. And Traxel had him 0-2. And, and there was not much doubt about that one. Jennings went back to the wall, but... He took it way back into center field, about halfway up that hitting background. But 414 feet, the play by Traxel, an easy one. And we'll take a couple of looks at a historic home run. It's an 0-2 curveball. McGuire goes down and gets it, and he's got a pretty good idea that it's out of the ballpark. And watch the reaction of Mark McGuire when he realizes that it is indeed number 58. 
Watch it again. The curveball down. See you later. Robin Jennings got to stand and admire it as it went out. On to the greenery out there. Some fan went out there and retrieved that ball, which will now have some value, you figure. Remember tonight on WGN, what's coming up for you? We'll show you that uh, list again in a moment where uh, Mark McGuire has now positioned himself. Pretty select company for Mark McGuire. Now Gaetti all the way ahead, three balls and no strikes. And you know Gary has a 3-0 green light, so you certainly want to be careful here. Well, there has been 159 home run season. Babe Ruth doing that in the 20s. Gary Gaetti is on board, so. That's what's next for McGuire. He'll have at least another at bat. And see if he can match the 1921 season of Ruth. I guess that's called closing with a finish. He's got three home runs of the last four official at bats that he's had in this series. Three homers and a strikeout. He's also been walked four times. Well, that wouldn't necessarily be considered a bad pitch, but McGuire loves the ball down, and he just golfed it out of the park. Now Dimitri Young, he's 0 for 2. So we're tied at 1. Some history from Mark McGuire. This ball bashed foul over towards the Cub dugout. Now 123 runs batted in for McGuire, also <laughs> a pretty good year. I think what's even more amazing is McGuire's played 51 games now for St. Louis. And in 51 games, he's hit 24 home runs. Pencil that over an entire season. And that's well over 70 home runs. Well, McGuire has now scored 38 runs as a Cardinal. But 24 of those have been when he has hit a home run. <laughs> That's another remarkable thing about McGuire. Actually, if you add up what he's done with Oakland as well, he has only 30 runs scored this year that have not come on his own home runs. Ground ball to third. Let's see if the Cubs can turn two. Cairo unloads. And they got him. Dimitri Young doubled up. And the inning ends. The McGuire home run, number 58 for him. We're now tied at one at the end of six. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Pepsi. Generation next. Remember, Mr. Pearson, once you enter the witness protection program, you'll disappear. Here's your new passport, driver's license, and keys. New house, new car. Mr. Simons. Happy trails to you. Flares to stadium now. Flares to stadium now. On my signal, begin now. Laser tag. Up to you're 100 out. foot firing range. Three second force shield. Out, you're out. Leave the grid now. Devastating Super Strike. Laser Tag. The name that made the game. Stadium not included. Tom's a single dad ready to give dating a spin. Here's the key to my van. The Tom Show. Tonight at 8 on WGN. Low interest. Cash back. Low lease. You want a new minivan, and we want to sell you one. It's that simple. At Chrysler and Plymouth, we want what you want. And now, during the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance, there are big savings on the minivan you want. Get $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Town & Country, or save on Plymouth Voyager, the lowest-priced minivan you can buy. 
Savings on the biggest selection of award-winning minivans. The Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance. Because we want what you want. It's that simple. New pitcher comes on for St. Louis as we move to the seventh inning. John Frescatori in a 1-1 game. Frescatori at 5-2, a fine ERA of 251 on for the 59th time. 79 innings, he's fanned 58, walked 33, and given up five home runs. And the game is squarely in his hands. Ibar off the hook in a 1-1 tie. And that one cardinal run courtesy of Mark McGuire. Well, the two runs scored in the sixth inning. They couldn't have scored in more divergent ways. The Cubs getting theirs on a suicide squeeze bunt. Cardinals getting theirs on the mammoth home run by Mark McGuire. 414 feet dead central. And I believe that's the Cubs 185th home run given up. That's an all time record for them this year. So it is a year of records. Uh, <laughs> that one well, you just as soon not have yeah. but you can throw that one. Do. Throw that one back please. Well the pitching staff has set a record for the most strikeouts in a single season. So that's the positive stat but yeah 185 home runs allowed and the team has only hit what 127. That's it. Kieschnick looping one towards the left field seats. The Cardinals now have their club record for the most home runs hit in a season with that McGuire blast. That could be in danger next year having Mark McGuire for a full season. Yeah, just from three, four in the order, McGuire and Langford. You might get 100 home runs there. Langford, 31 homers this year. And remember, he missed the first six or seven weeks. McGuire now has 58 home runs. And Stoney, what if he hadn't been up in the air towards the end of July? As Kieschnick takes a strike, it's one and two. He, of course, didn't know if he was going to get traded or not. He was slumping pretty badly. Took him a while to get acclimated to the National League once he got here. There's no telling what he would have had. Kieschnick pounds one on the ground. Delino to Shields cuts it off. Throws out Kieschnick. Ibar's day is done at six innings. He gave up a run on three hits. He walked three fan four and a pretty good outing for young Manny Ibar. And a lot of people projecting him perhaps as the number five starter next year. A lot has to do with what's going to happen with Andy Bennis. They have tried to make a deal with him. They've talked with him somewhat. They would love to have him back to join his brother Allen who will be back next year. But they're not sure yet what will happen with the big right hander as he talks with Dave Duncan. There'll be a few teams like to have Mr. Bennis. Why can't the Cubs get a Bennis? Uh, <laughs> Andy and Allen take your pick. They're pretty uh, pretty good pitchers. Manny Alexander now one ball one strike to count to him. There's the younger brother Alan Bennis. The fabulous Bennis brothers and there's a third one Adam Bennis. Oh he's not projected as a major leaguer. I think he played single A and double A ball this year. That one's outside two and one. Well, probably the two premier free agents if they stay that way will be Daryl Kyle and Andy Bennis as far as pitching is concerned. Still a lot of time to go before that list comes out and becomes official. Alexander loops one in a center base hit for him. I would think one guy that helped himself a little bit on the free agent market was Wilson Alvarez with that performance yesterday. Seven Did innings you? of two hit ball Steve got the Giants Rensen. into the postseason. Ken Hill's going to be on that list but he is uh, certainly not what we saw at the beginning of last year. Ben McDonald to be out there. He's been hurt. One guy I haven't heard anybody talk about Stoney that I think had a great year is Willie Blair of the Detroit Tigers. He's had a magnificent year coming back from a line drive off his face and put together just an exceptional season for a team under 500. Of course the Detroit Tigers are a team on the rise. They've got some wonderful young arms in their organization. That's a team that will get better and better. Traxel bunting at it fouls it. It's 0 and 1. That's a pretty good story in Detroit last year. Just a woeful team. Randy Smith going over there. You might remember him as a GM with San Diego. He's signed a fairly well deserved extension on his contract to general manage that team and the Tigers got a lot of very talented youngsters and that farm system is 
pretty productive these days. Well, had they beaten their former mate, David Wells, yesterday, they would have had a shot to finish at 500 with a win today. Best they can do is 80 and 82, but considering they were 53 and 109 last year, that's, that's pretty good. Pitching out, one and one the count now. Alexander stays put. The Cubs will not lose 109. It's only felt like they've lost 109. Worst they can do is 68 and 94. And again, uh, the thing that they were clinging to, like a life preserver, that was the exact record the San Francisco Giants ended up with last year. Traxel the push bunt. McGuire fields it. His play is to first. And gets it over there. Two down in the inning. And let's see if Robin Jennings can break the tie. He'll be the Cub batter. Good bunt by Steve Traxel. So McGuire had a thought, but Manny Alexander runs too well, so he just flipped it to first. On the scoreboard, Jeremy Burnitz has a home run for Milwaukee. It is a grand slam. Hit off Jimmy Key. And Jimmy Key, to our knowledge, had never allowed a grand slam in his career. He was bidding to join the ranks of a former Steve Stone teammate, Jim Palmer, who went through an entire Hall of Fame career. Never allowed a grand slam. The Cubs, just to tie it together to them somehow, they're the only team in baseball this year who have not hit a grand slam. Still a few more innings to go yet before this season's over. Yeah, we need some base runners, though. That's up and outside. Robin Jennings up there at one and one. Cranked, but right at McGuire. That'll end the inning. Well, McGuire doing it all here today. The defense, and we've seen and heard the offense, his 58th home run. And we're still tied. At the stretch, it is Cubs 1, Cardinals 1. Reno's getting written up by the principal. That's F-R-E-N-O. Make sure you don't put two N's in it. My mom would have a fit. Tonight at 6 on WGA. Carol's seeing a new guy. I can't wait to have my arms around you. I could choke on a breadstick. <laughs> all right, already. Tonight at 8.30 on WGN. You want to fight back? Join us. Coming this fall, one of the most highly anticipated series of the new season. Lost for 20 years, his legacy to the world will finally be revealed. Talk to me! From the creator of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry's Earth Final Conflict. Premiering October 18th on WGN. On an all-new Tom show, Tom's back in the dating pool. Here's the key to my van. And he's making quite a splash. She likes you. She wants you to call. What do you think she meant by that? The Tom Show. Then, on an all-new All Right Already, Carol's seeing eye-to-eye -eye with a new guy. I can't wait to have my arms around you. I could choke on a breadstick. It's the episode the LA Times calls the funniest new comedy of the season. The Tom Show and All Right Already. Tonight at 8 on WGN. John Lithgow performs the Discover Card Dial Along song. An extemporaneous piece. Provided for your dialing pleasure while you call 1 800 It Pays To and apply for your Discover Card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always <laughs> pays you back. That was a nice surprise. And that's music to everyone's ears. It Pays To Discover. To apply, call 1 800 It Pays To. Accepted where you see the Nova sign. Ryan Sandberg's day and playing career is done. His first at bat ever, a ground out to Dave Concepcion off Mario Soto in Cincinnati. As Marrero steps in, lifts one to left field, won't get out. Grant Brown is there for it. But does Sandberg, just to come full circle, is last at bat. We can put it in the books now. A deep fly ball to Ray Lankford off Manny Ibar. 1-1 one, one ball game here, and let's pause for station identification. This is WGN-TV, Chicago, America's number one sports station. 
In St. Louis, Josh Lewin with Steve Stone and producer-director Arnie Harris. Final game of the 1997 season. Steve Traxel's been very good so far. Bumps in a strike to Ordaz. Ramon Tatis loosening up in the bullpen for the Cubs. Rip and a miss. It's 0-2. We're still waiting for Sammy Sosa to make an appearance in this ball game. Jim Riggleman promised he would get him in so that Sosa can end the year with 162 games played. Of 162 possible. Lance Painter continues to throw in the bullpen for the Cardinals. Pop up. Tyler Houston sheds the mask. Hansen coming in, calls him off and takes care of it. It's a much easier play for the third baseman, and so when he calls for it, whoever's catching realizes you've got to give way, and that's what happens. Looks like Royce Clayton's going to come up and pinch hit now. Well, that's because it is at 266, and this is his first pinch hitting duty of the year. Royce played now in 154 games, pretty durable for a shortstop. And he's had a great year as now. Of course, with Ozzie Smith's retirement, he is a solo act. Last year, a lot of controversy. As Ozzie Smith still wanted to play, Royce Clayton had been acquired to play. He ended up splitting the job last year. Clayton trying to close out with a nine-game hitting streak. Nine homers for him this year, 61 runs batted in. And uh, as a shortstop, that's okay. Pretty good addition to this team. They got him from San Francisco. Played it away three pitchers for him, and San Francisco hasn't had much use out of those guys. Very excited to get over here. Royce Clayton says when he was growing up, his room was a shrine to Ozzie Smith. Posters all over the place. And a lot of his baseball cards. Takes a rip here. So he got to play with him for a year. Now he has replaced him here in St. Louis. That is a tough thing to do. Ozzy is one of those guys that redefined the position. Probably the most acrobatic of all the shortstops on the artificial surface. And he made himself a great hitter late in his career. When he came up with San Diego, you could actually knock the bat out of his hands with inside fastballs. But he was an offensive force before it was over for him. Takes the walk here with two out and Delano De Shields coming up. 1982, we've been talking about that as the year that Ryan Sandberg came over from the Phillies to the Cubs. That was also the year that Ozzie Smith got to St. Louis from San Diego. With Gary Templeton. And you've got 30 stolen bases standing at first base in Royce Clayton. And so you would think. Steve Trice will have to hold him close. That represents a go-ahead run. Delano De Shields takes a strike. He's been closing hot for a guy that hit in the 220s last year. Right now he's at 296 and has to be real happy about that. They will be exercising the option on his contract. You don't find many second basemen hitting the 290s in this day and age. The Shields has put together a very solid year, and they're looking for more of the same next year. And he'll also score many more runs next year than this with McGuire in the lineup every day. Scored 92 runs this year. That's going to go up appreciatively. Really makes you appreciate the career of Ryan Sandberg. We're talking about what are admittedly great numbers for DeShields. 294 batting average. Ryan Sandberg, he will end up with a career batting average of around 285. And of course, had uh, years where he was above 300. 100 runs scored. Ryan Sandberg has been there, done that. Did it in 82, led the league in 84, his MVP year. Did it again in 85, 89, 90, 91, 92. 
wouldn't be surprised if Clayton took off here. Even if he's thrown out, you don't mind leading off next inning with the shield. Better lead off with him than Plantier. Let's see if Tony La Russa on the last day of the season is going to send his shortstop. He doesn't and Traxel's down the front slope of the mound. He throws out to Shields. That ends the bottom of the seventh inning. Cubs will be up in the eighth trying to break a 1-1 tie. Low interest. Cash back. Low lease. You want a new minivan, and we want to sell you one. It's that simple. At Chrysler and Plymouth, we want what you want. And now, during the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance, there are big savings on the minivan you want. Get $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Town & Country, or save on Plymouth Voyager, the lowest priced minivan you can buy. Savings on the biggest selection of award-winning minivans, the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance. Because we want what you want. It's that simple. It's a new day with new improved Transitions lenses. Outdoors, they get darker faster. Indoors, clearer. And Transitions lenses are thinner and more comfortable than regular glass or plastic lenses. So you feel and look better. It's a new day. It's a new day in eye care with Transitions lenses. There's no question about the fact that the lawn takes a real beating during the summer, and consequently, you need something like Scott's Winterizer. When I put down Winterizer in the fall, it allows us to develop a good, strong root base, and it allows the uh, lawn to endure the winter weather, and you get a real early greening. This grass is beautiful, thick, deep green. Uh, people will stop by and say, how'd you do that? Scott's Winterizer gives the grass a kickstart in the fall and makes it really look great in the spring. Vine Line makes a great gift for any occasion. Call 773-404-CUBS and receive a name and lights photo of a two-year order. Vine Line. It's the next best thing to know in the manager. Final game of the 97 regular season, Cubs and Cardinals on Ryan Sandberg's last day. Rhino done after an 0 for 2 performance. And as we get into the eighth inning, tied at one, Lance Painter, the new St. Louis pitcher. New second baseman in there as well, David Bell. And there's a look at David Bell. And Lance Painter comes into this one. 0-1, 540 ERA on for the 14th time. There's a nice white sign. Boy, doesn't it always happen that way? Just when they've got a chance to be on TV, they, they turn the sign around. <laughs> I don't know where the camera is, guys. We give you some uh, some play. There's Painter, and here is Miguel Cairo. Sammy Sosa might be hitting this inning. He has not played yet today. Cairo is the man who jogged out there to second base. To replace Ryan Sandberg in the bottom of the third. Lifts this one into shallow right. David Bell going back. Dimitri Young coming on for the out. Last game of the season. And I know it's kind of corny. I know that uh, First baseman, Mark Grace. probably a lot of fans don't want to hear the broadcasters thank a lot of people, but. Uh, if you'll indulge us, I mean, there are a lot of people that have made this a very special, if not winning, 1997 season. And uh, we want to thank some people along the way as we get towards the end of this game. Mark Grace for the fly ball down the left field line. Who's going to get it? Or does at the strike? Personally, I guess uh, in my first year, I want to say thanks to all the Cubs fans who have welcomed me to, uh, to the fold. Special thank you to Steve, of course. Been a great year, Stoney. Looking forward to uh, another one with you. Well, it has been a unique season. It's been a lot of fun, and hopefully, uh, Josh will be able to be teamed up again next year. And it certainly was a season that had its ups and downs. Unfortunately for the Cubs, more downs than ups. And unfortunately, Josh, you didn't get a chance to do all that many home games, and on the road, things were a whole lot tougher for us. 
Well, I, I feel like this was, was my fault this year because, again, the team was horrible <laughs> on the road. Harry was fine at home. I mean, he, you know, he, Harry had a great year. He was three over <laughs> at home, and unfortunately on the road, things didn't go quite as well for us. Uh, my bad. I, if you want to blame somebody this year, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. I can, I can stand the heat. But uh, actually, that I, I do want to thank Harry, too, for uh, a dream come true, getting a chance to be on the, the same broadcast day as with him. The most passionate and exciting broadcaster baseball has ever known and I'm really happy to hear that Harry wants to come back in 1998 I'm sure he'll be back Terrell Lowry getting a chance to hit at WGN obviously Arnie Harris there's been a terrific I'd always heard that but I got to experience that firsthand this year and For next year if you do come back he will pick up a check he promises seriously yeah it usually oh. takes one year to get used to it all right I'm back then Mandy Cohen unbelievable work this year special thanks to Mandy Kim Fields at WGN of course Peter Walker Jim Zerwick Dennis Fitzsimons everybody at WGN and uh, in Tribune Broadcasting I know it's been tough for those guys to watch a 68 and 93 season but the big thank you goes to the fans as Lowry swings and misses 2.2 million almost in a year that was a colossal disappointment. You talk about an MVP year 2.2 million fans at Wrigley Field. That is incredible. Cubs and Cardinals tied at one. We are in the middle of the eighth in St. Louis. Starting Monday night at 10 on WGN. Universal Commodities Special Report on Heating Oil has the answers you need to take advantage of a projected major move in oil prices. Did you know the U.S. imports more than half its oil from foreign countries? And that emerging superpowers like China will soon be in direct competition with us for steadily dwindling foreign oil reserves? Call Universal today to get the information on this exciting investment opportunity. Call 1-800-444-2567 to get your complete investment package on heating oil. Market conditions change rapidly. Don't delay. Call 1-800-444-2567 and find out how with a 10-cent move in your option premium, a $6,000 investment in heating oil options has the potential for results of $20,000 or more. The proceeding was a mathematical leverage example and does not imply that clients have or will achieve similar returns. Heating oil is in short supply. Now is the time to make your move. Call 1-800-444-2567 to get your free videotape on options. With profit potentials this large, there is a corresponding level of risk. Call 1-800-444-2567. Get the special report on heating oil and your free videotape on options. That's 1-800-444-2567. Are you or someone you care about diabetic? If so, and you have Medicare or private insurance, you may be able to receive your diabetic supplies at absolutely no cost to you. Premier Diabetic Supply offers a full assortment of diabetic supplies, including testing strips, lancets, insulin, syringes, and meters, all conveniently shipped to your home. Call our friendly operators toll-free for details at 1-800-496-0400. That's Premier Diabetic Services, 1-800-496-0400. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by CarQuest Auto Parts. Call 1-800-492-PART for the nearest location. To the bottom of the eighth, and there is a new pitcher on the mound for the Cubs. You see that hotel there in the distance. I'm not saying that this particular relief pitcher that's coming on right now for the Cubs is the one, but there was a relief pitcher that actually inquired of the uh, hotel concierge where he could pick up a cab to get from that hotel to this ballpark and as you can see from that shot I'll be what about a 60 cent fare <laughs> so it might have been Mark we showed him maybe it was maybe it wasn't but uh, you know first go around in the league I've certainly had my share of uh, similar foibles and Pachoto comes out at 3 and 0 296 ERA on for the 24th time Steve Traxel did a nice job. One run on seven hits through seven innings. And he'll leave with a no decision. Bill Plantier takes a strike. And Terrell Lowry stays in the game in center. That pinball's Robin Jennings over to left. And there you see Mark Pichota has a chance to go to 4-0 if the Cubs can get a lead for him. But a most immediate concern after Plantier, he'll face Mark McGuire. Who, if you missed it earlier, homered in the sixth inning, number 58. A 
We'd also like to send some thanks to the media relations department, which makes our job a whole lot easier. Sharon Panazzo, Chuck Wasserstrom, and Wanda Taylor. Dan Guza, too, assisting in his uh, first year. They did a terrific job this year. And also the marketing department, John McDonough, Jay Blunk, Rebecca Polaronis, Artie Dixit, Susan Atalski, Mary Therese Kraft, Maria Torres, John Davila, Tina Fontenot, and Maravette Lopez. They also did a great job. Maravette soon to be a mommy. Congratulations to Maravette. Blanchier is on. McGuire is up. The fans are on their feet in St. Louis. They're trying to will home run number 59. Well, Pashota in the first game of the series faced McGuire and he walked him. Now he gets a chance to face him again with the go ahead run on first. And Willie McGee comes on to pinch run for Phil Plantier, and he'll get a standing ovation. Of course, they're already standing for McGuire, so <laughs> it doesn't mean all that much, but when McGee is announced, they roar here in St. Louis. Well, for Cardinal fans, this is everything in a snapshot right here. McGee on and McGuire up. And McGee is on the move. He is in there at second base. Stealing just his eighth base of the year, and Jim Riggleman in a late season argument. Talking to Greg Bonet. We'll watch it again. Throw beats him, but it looks like the foot is on the bag before the tag. Well, this is for old times' sake. Greg Bonet threw Jim Riggleman out of a ball game here last year. <laughs> in September, Riggs just goes out to say his piece. Runner at second. And in doing that, now I know Jim Riggleman wants to win this ball game. He got first base open. What are you going to do here with McGuire up there in first base open now? If they intentionally walk him, Riggleman better get an escort out of this stadium. <laughs> no, nope, Riggs knows what the moment is. They'll pitch to Mark McGuire. in there from Peshota. Peshota struck out McGuire back at Wrigley. But didn't seem to want any part of him the other day here in St. Louis. Down and in. Only Babe Ruth and Roger Maris have 59 home runs or more. McGuire now with 58. He's hit three in the last two days. Big cut at the high heat. Two and two to big Mark McGuire. Big cut, no contact. Already this guy's got 15 home runs in this month of September. Cardinal record for any month. 2-2 two, two pitch. Make it 3-2. and two. Last couple days, Mark McGuire has walked four times. He has homered three times, and he has struck out once. It's like there is nothing else in the universe for Mark McGuire to do. It's got to be one of those three things. This time it's a walk. He is fifth in the last two days. Cardinal fans are booing, but once they stop, they'll realize that in a 1-1 game, they've got two on and nobody out with Ray Langford coming up. Langford one out of three in this one. He's flirting with a 300 batting average. Also two RBI short of a hundred. Strike one called to him. Some other thank yous by the way while we have the chance. Frank Maloney and the uh, ticket operations staff at Wrigley. Great job this year as always. Same can be said for Tom Cooper and his staff in stadium operations. 
publication staff turned out some great stuff as always. Ernie Roth, Jay Rand, and everybody. That one down and away, one and one. Mark McGuire, that's the other Mark McGuire <laughs> in business operations. He heads up a great department, Connie Kowal, Carl Rice, everybody else. We say thanks to them for a job well done this year. Langford hammers away, drives this one to right field, into the corner. Caught at the wall. Brooks Kieschnick grabs it. McGee tags and goes to third. Well, that one just missed going out of the ballpark at one of the shallowest parts of the park, and Brooks Kieschnick goes back to the wall. Doesn't have much room to spare, but stays with it. Good concentration on the part of Brooks. And he makes the catch with his back to the wall. And on the play, Willie McGee takes third base just 90 feet away from scoring the go-ahead run. The Cub destroyer, Gary Gaetti, is the batter. Well, you've got to watch the hole between third and short. That's where Gaetti hits a lot of ground balls. And if he does hit a ground ball, it can easily be two. He doesn't run all that well, and he's grounded into 20 of them this year. Little half swing foul into the seats. Bob Patterson getting ready in the Cub bullpen. Look at that against the Cubs this year. At 38 years old, this is a heck of a season for Gary Gaetti. 17 homers, 68 runs batted in. Tees off and he blasts it to right field. Kieschnick is back. This will get the run home. Well, Gaetti, a veteran who knows exactly what pitch to look for. With his sixth sacrifice fly, the Cardinals have the lead. Gaetti gets a hanging slider up in the zone. He knows that's a pitch to hit a fly ball, and that's exactly what he does. And the Cardinals have the lead. Two on the score, and here is Dimitri Young, 0 for 3. Now the Cubs will have to rally in the top of the ninth. Five, six, seven in the order due up. Hanson, Houston, Kieschnick, and I'm sure you'll see Sammy. Young with a slowly hit ground ball in the hole. It's Alexander goes to Cairo, ends the inning. And the season has but three outs left to it. Cubs trying to prolong it. They will trail heading into the ninth. It is two to one. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. Carol's seeing a new guy. I can't wait to have my arms around you. I could choke on a breadstick. <laughs> all right, already. Tonight at 8.30 on WGN. Wouldn't you love to be free? To go wherever your whims take you. Whenever you want. For any reason at all. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed. With Southwest, you can. You are now free to move about the country. Remember, Mr. Pearson, once you enter the witness protection program, you'll disappear. Here's your new passport, driver's license, and keys. New house, new car. Mr. Simons. Happy trails to you. Nice car. Yeah. Happy He's not going to make it, is he? Uh -huh. 
got a special treat for you. Thank you, Mommy. Mm, you're welcome. Now, don't be late, honey. Good news. Reese's Nut Rages bars are now 20% bigger. Both these men have athletes for it, but only one used the soothing cure. Prescription strength Desinex. It calms the itching and cools the burning while it heals. Got athletes for Get Desinex, the soothing cure. Normally this would be a spot for the Eck, but instead they stay with Lance Painter for now, and Sammy shows it a pinch hit. Ryan Sandberg's day and career is done. He went out 0 for 2 this afternoon. And uh, Sosa, now having played in all 162 games for the Cubs, Willie McGee stays in the game for St. Louis. He's in right. Scarborough Green is in center. Dimitri Young moves to left. Cubs looking to tie it in the ninth. There's Young now in left field. The Cubs 0-74 this year when trailing after eight. I'd say this would be a nice time for the first ninth inning comeback. It's their last chance. And this is Sammy's first chance to pinch hit. When you start every game, you just don't pinch hit all that often. <laughs> well, he takes, and it's two balls and no strikes. Curtis King is loosening in the St. Louis pen just in case. But again, not Eckers. Kind of surprised they allowed the left-handed painter to face Sammy. But face him, he will. There is a strike to Sammy. And uh, before we forget, just want to uh, finish thanking all the folks with the, uh, the Cubs organization. Obviously, from Jim Dowdle and Andy McPhail on down through the ranks. They've had a lot to, uh, to deal with this year with the team at 68 and 93, but it's been a pleasure to deal with everybody. So said the big rip. It's two and two. The baseball operations staff, Ed Lynch, Scott Nelson. There you see the Cubs record. Trailing after eight. Traveling secretary, Jimmy Bank. Had to see all the carnage on the road this year. The team has only won 26 road games this season. Arlene Gill, executive assistant to Andy McPhail and Ed Lynch. Thanks to them, and uh, thank you, Sammy Sosa. Says Lance Painter. Sosa offering it that one, and Sammy strikes out to open up the ninth inning. Well, Sammy will be frozen at the 174 strikeout mark with his low breaking ball down. He tried to check his swing, but nothing doing, and so... We're going to see Mike Hubbard now coming on to pinch hit. Chrysler right, so Plymouth game summary. Ryan Sandberg ending his Hall of Fame career with an 0 for 2 afternoon. The last at bat, he almost took the ball into the stands. He just missed a home run. Mark McGuire did not miss. He took one out to center for home run number 58. So everything that the fans were buzzing about, they have seen today. A McGuire home run. They knew they would see the Sandberg retirement. Rhino took himself out of the game in the bottom of the third. Hubbard takes and a strike is called. The Cubs down to their last two outs of 1997. strikes account to Hubbard. Well, we especially want to thank Arnie Harris for keeping our mics open all year long. I know there were times when he wanted to shut them off, but he was <laughs> kind enough not to do that. Pleasure to work with you, Arnie. Thanks so much for everything. And, of course, it'll be basketball for Mandy Cohn and Arnie Harris. And wait till next year because spring training is right around the corner. Well, that does sound nice. Mesa, Arizona, the Ho Ho Cams once again doing a great job for the Cubs. And that beautiful new ballpark down there. 
Jose Hernandez in the on deck circle. I want to thank Arnie and Mandy for not mentioning the fact that the Bulls ended up with more wins this year than the Cubs. <laughs> but as so we've been talking about, there is promise for 1998. How about the sun coming out, making an appearance here in St. Louis on an otherwise overcast day? Our final thank you will be to Mr. Sun. Hubbard down on strikes. And there's one out to go in 1997. And believe me, Stoney, I don't want to presuppose that Jose Hernandez is out here. I obviously hope he's not, but uh, just in case, a final thanks to you. I'm sure all the Cub fans would echo my feelings that uh, you are incredible at what you do it's it's been a pleasure i'm just sorry we didn't get to, to talk about more wins well it's been a very nice year and perhaps with a few changes josh we will have a lot more victories to talk about in 1998. hernandez looks at one downstairs now if this score holds the cubs will end up 68 and 94. Again, 500, better than 500 at home, but they lost 55 on the road. If indeed they lose this one, it's 2-0 to Jose Hernandez. Only one change that we know about for sure. Marco Oliveras is uh, coaching his last game at first for the Cubs. He'll be replaced by Tom Gamboa, it looks like, next year. There's a strike to Hernandez. So we say so long to Mako and uh, thank him. Of course, we say so long to Rhino today. Swing, fly ball right field. It is caught. That's it. Well, appropriately for Cardinal fans, it's Willie McGee that catches the last ball of the season. For Cub fans, another road loss and a more far-reaching loss. Ryan Sandberg is now done playing professional baseball. Mark McGuire ends his year with 58 home runs. He hit one on an 0-2 pitch today to join only a couple of other right-hand hitters that had ever hit 58 home runs, Hank Greenberg and Jimmy Fox. Well, everybody congratulating everybody on the Cardinals side. The Cubs will finish their season at 68 and 94. And that will give them something to improve upon next year. It would be hard to believe that the Cubs would go through another season like this one. I don't think that they're going to. It was a very difficult year. McGuire throws away his cap. And the Cardinal fans have three more years to look at Mark McGuire at first base here and to add up how many home runs he's going to hit. And the Cubs left with a lot of question marks, Josh, just exactly where they want to fill the holes first, what the team will look like. They have to go through the expansion draft on November 18th. There will be some draft day deals there. They'll be scouring the wires for Rule 5 acquisitions. Last year was Rodney Myers. This year, Ramon Tatis came over in Rule 5. And the Cubs congratulating one another. They have survived this year. Mark Clark came over a very pleasant addition as was Lance Johnson the youngsters Doug Glanville did a great job Jeremy Gonzalez a great job Kevin Ory had a very fine rookie season so there are a lot of bright spots on the horizon for the Cubs maybe we'll see Kerry Woods next year there's a chance of that and that promising youngster certainly has a spot in the rotation so it should be a very interesting winter. There's a lot of work to do, and I think that the team that ended the season this year will be vastly different from the team that takes the field the beginning of 1998. Cubs lose the finale 2-1. to one. We'll be back with much more, a lot to talk about. We'll come back to St. Louis right after this. From the very first day I met Hayden Fox, I looked for his rational side. Ah, just need to open a window, I'm gonna jump out! His romantic side. Oh, God, I just thought we had something going here. You know, Christy, just a simple going thing. I even looked for his sensitive side. We are not equal. Oh, is that right? I'm weaker. I'm still looking, but at least now I'm looking five times a week. 
on Coach. Coach, weeknights at 6.30 on WGN. An unhappily mom croaked. He's back. Time for an exorcism. I'll be happy to help mom exercise. <laughs> Tonight at 7.30 on WGN. Brooks Brothers' latest eyewear. Tailored in about an hour at Lens Crafters. The Brooks Brothers event. On now at Lens Crafters. The Michelin X1, with a six year unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin control in most driving conditions. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. Low interest. Cash back. Low lease. You want a new minivan, and we want to sell you one. It's that simple. At Chrysler and Plymouth, we want what you want. And now, during the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance, there are big savings on the minivan you want. Get $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Town & Country, or save on Plymouth Voyager, the lowest priced minivan you can buy. Savings on the biggest selection of award-winning minivans, the Chrysler and Plymouth model year clearance. Because we want what you want. It's that simple. Here's a Budweiser play of today's game. Mark McGuire grabs a slice of history as he tees off on Steve Traxel. Gets the 0-2 breaking ball, hammers it out to center field. That tied the game. Cardinals go on to win it 2-1. Mark McGuire ends his season with 58 home runs. And the Cubs, well, they didn't pitch badly today. They just didn't win today. 2-1 the final. Bill Regan, the Cub pitching coach, will have a comment on today's game and what's in store for the offseason. We'll talk to Phil Regan right after this. Had a great practice today. I know you guys are hungry, but this new big king gave me an idea for a new play. So listen up. Quarterback takes off tackle, flips the ball to God, pulls. We hand off to the wingback. Wingback is up to go for a touchdown. Any questions? Coach, can I eat my blocker now? The new Big King from Burger King, flame broiled with 75% more beef. It's like a Big Mac, except it's bigger and tastes better. And right now, you can get one for just 99 cents. Got any more new plays, Coach? Space is no longer safe. Ready, Imperial Commander. Ready, Rebel Commander. In the new Star Wars Galactic Battle, massive fleets of Imperial and Rebel starships trade blows. Imperial it's Commander, it's fire. Nothing but it. Victory is not just hit or miss. Put a strategic battle plan into place. Identify. Star Destroyer. Isolate. Meet and incinerate your enemy. Electronic yeah. Galactic Battle with 20 authentic ships. The force in Galactic Battles. Batteries not included. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. Safari, yes, the midsize van by GMC. It does what many vans can't. See your GMC dealer today. Join Honorary Chairman Harry Carey, Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, Andre Dawson, and a host of Cubs players and coaches for the 13th Annual Cubs Convention, January 16th through the 18th at the Chicago Hilton and Towers, sponsored by Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy autograph and photo sessions, hitting and pitching clinics, special events just for kids, and much more. It's the greatest off-season event in all of baseball. For more information, call the Cubs Convention hotline at 773-404-CUBS. There's only one thing missing. Every last drop of Pepsi. Any ideas? Yeah, I'm working on it. I think the fat one knows. Pepsi. Generation next. Back in St. Louis, Josh Lewin, Steve Stone, and Phil Regan joining us, the Cup pitching coach. And, uh, Phil, I know that it's been a frustrating season. Uh, your return to the Chicago Cubs fold. I know you hoped it would go a lot better than this, but did you find some rays of sunshine? Give us some reason for hope in 98. <laughs> well, Josh, uh, th there were some rays of hope, I, I really think, because, number one, uh, when we left spring training, we really didn't think that we would uh, have many, as many uh, good games by our starting pitching. It was one of the weaknesses that we had, but that came along fairly well. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had some bright spots. Uh, Kevin Foster, the first half of the season, winning 10 ball games. 
uh, Traxel, uh, the last half of the season, I thought pitched much better than his record showed. Kevin Tappany coming back and showing that he could pitch without his split finger, and uh, getting Mark Clark, uh, which really adds to our to our rotation. So those those were some real bright spots. I, I felt uh, you know Bob Patterson pitched well all year. Uh, Terry Adams uh, had a chance to to save some ball games and end up with 17 or 18 saves and and uh, get get the experience to maybe go into next year. But uh, Mark Pichotta, I, th I thought, showed us a lot. This was a guy we didn't even count on, and uh, he came up and pitched some good baseball for us. And, and for that reason, uh, there, there are some good arms. I've talked to a lot of scouts that have come through, and they said, you know, slowly but surely, you're, you're gathering some good arms, and, and your pitching is coming around. So, you know, a, a lot of times it's just a matter of experience, and, and uh, you keep acquiring them and trying to get better, which I think we'll do in the offseason. But... We've got a pretty good nucleus, I think, that we can start with. Well, Phil, coming into 1997, when you looked at the starting rotation, including Terry Mulholland as the opening day starter, they were a cumulative 33 games under 500. Right. During the course of the year, you have added 60% of a starting rotation. I'm talking about Mark Clark, Kevin Tappany, and Jeremy Gonzalez. You would have to say, heading into next year, just those three guys alone, and you can factor in Kerry Wood if you want, and perhaps a lot of competition for the number five spot. That's if you don't acquire anybody. You'd have to say the Cubs are far ahead going into 1998 than they were heading into 1997. Well, I, I think you're exactly right, Steve, because, uh, you know, even, even Steve Traxel had kind of an off year from what we had expected him to do, and, and, uh, but I think he learned a lot. Uh, you know, we, we made a lot of adjustments in his delivery. Uh, we're trying to get him to pitch faster, uh, which, uh, but today uh, he showed that, you know, the type of pitcher that he is. Uh, and if he does this uh, all year long next year, uh, th this could, guy could be a factor. Uh, Foster uh, made a lot of improvements, I thought. So with Kerry Woods down there, there are, there are six, uh, six, maybe seven candidates that uh, we're looking at for the starting rotation next year. And that's not even counting if we, if we make some kind of a deal and maybe try to get a, you know, a, a big number one uh, or number two pitcher. Phil, you've been there for finales as a player, obviously, and as a coach, and even as a manager. What's it like the last day of the season? You're done. I mean, the curtain has been lowered, and, and this is it. How long does it take you to kind of come down from everything that's happened this year <laughs> and really start to think about everything for next year? Well, not very long after this year, Josh, <laughs> let me tell you, because uh, this, this was a tough year uh, for us, and, and uh, you know, all the, all the way around. I, I, I told Riggs this morning, I, I, I really thought, you know, in working with the pitchers, they all worked hard. They were great in everything that we did, but we just came up short on a lot of a lot of, in a lot of different areas, and uh, you know. But but you look. Uh, you, sometimes you're just glad to get it over with because you you've struggled. Uh, today was a good example, uh, you know, of a ball game where we walk a guy, he steals second base, and, and we lose it on a on a little, uh, you know, fly ball or base hit, but uh, and and lose two to one. So those those are we we have been in so many ball games that we have lost, you know, uh, late in the late in the games, and and those are kind of heartbreakers. So. It's not easy, uh, you know. You miss a lot of these guys, and and you look forward to seeing them next year. But uh, maybe under under better conditions and uh, with a better ball club. Well, Phil, there are certainly some questions that have been answered as far as the starting rotation is concerned, and I think that everybody associated with the Cubs is fairly comfortable with the three men we mentioned coming back. Certainly, and if Steve Traxel is one of those guys that comes back, you have to be happy with that because you have to believe he'll have a better year next year than this. But one of the real questions that hasn't been answered is the bullpen. And the bullpen this year, as we know, 20 games under 500. But more important than that, the one question mark would be Terry Adams. You saw him all year. You saw a man trying to learn to be a closer. Obviously, Mel Rojas got the first shot out of spring training. Right. He couldn't do it. And Terry Adams was the man who was trying to get him the ball. Then it fell to Terry Adams to come on in and try to close the door. Can Terry Adams do that? Will anything that happened to him this year, and he had some trying times, affect what he's going to do next year? Well, Steve, I think a lot of times a, a young pitcher, sometimes it takes him a while to, to become a closer. Uh, I, I thought at times this year he did a pretty good job after we handed it over to him, after we uh, traded Rojas, and uh, at times he came in and looked like he was going to be uh, the man that we wanted. And then, then I would say the last two weeks or three weeks it's kind of slacked off. But I, I think what, what Terry needs is, is uh, uh, to add another pitch, personally. I, I, he's got a pretty good curveball, and I'd like to see him throw that a little bit more. Uh, we tried to work on a split finger with him, which I think uh, would, would be outstanding for him if he can if he can do that. The problem is he's got kind of short fingers and uh, doesn't doesn't really have a good command of the of the split finger. But I think you know his fastball and slider are pretty good pitches, uh, but but they're too close to the same speed. Plus location uh, doesn't matter how hard you throw. Terry has to realize that as good a fastball as he has, 
he still has to make good location when he comes in to, uh, when he comes in to pitch. You just can't throw the ball down the middle and uh, because they're going to hit it. You can turn a pitching machine up to 100 miles an hour and within two pitches they'll adjust the speed if it's always in the same area. So, uh, you know, he's got enough to close with. Uh, it's just a matter of... Uh, to, to get it over mentally and to uh, and, and to adjust but I would like to see him come up maybe with another pitch something that, uh, that that is a little bit more off speed you mentioned Kevin Tappany able to win without his split finger and he went nine and three and it's hard to believe he could look any better than he did the second part of this season when he comes back next year and that hand is a hundred percent do you think he's going to go back to throwing the split <laughs> finger again or has he convinced himself Phil that that straight change and the mixing of speeds of his fastball is good enough to win and win big in the National League. Well, Steve, I, I talked to him about that, and, and I don't think uh, his thinking right now is probably he, he doesn't really need the split finger anymore because he's developed a, such a good changeup, and, and a lot of scouts back there thought he was throwing one because he's got such tremendous movement like down and away uh, to a left-hand hitter, but it's really a, uh, you know, a, a circle change type. Uh, so he, in his mind, Right now, I think he's proved to himself that he doesn't need that to win. Uh, and, and why take the chance? He's going to go see the doctor on it and, and see if it, uh, you know, what effect, uh, you know, he still has some pain in there a little bit. And it's going to be interesting to see if over the winter if that goes away. I, I think it probably will. But at least we know that no matter if he, if he has it or he doesn't has it, have it, he, uh, he still can win and be, and be a quality pitcher. Phil, final question for you. Steve and I uh, kind of put ourselves on the spot earlier today picking the uh, playoff winners. I want to ask you to do the same. Just going with your gut, you've seen the National League teams, all of them this year. Who do you like to come out of the National League and go to the World Series? Well, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, you, ha you have to like maybe, you know, this, this might surprise some people, but I, I kind of like uh, San Francisco a little bit, but I don't know if, they're, if their pitching is going to hold up. They got all left-handers going against uh, Florida. Uh, I, I, in my own mind, I, I guess uh, I go with the pitching as Atlanta. All right, you're with Stoney. Pitchers, <laughs> pitchers stay together. <laughs> Phil, thanks for everything. I know you're headed back to Grand Rapids for a little while before right. you take off for, uh, for winter ball. Have yourself a great winter. Thank you very much, fellas. All right, that's Phil Regan. Steve and I will be back with a closing comment right after this quick timeout. Reno and his students make headlines. That's F-R-E-N-O. Make sure you don't put two N's in it. My mom would have a fit. But the truth may get him fired. You wrote the story. Well, you published it without my permission. Yeah, but you wrote the story. And all new Freno. Then on the Parenthood, Zarya's found Mr. Right. Me? You know, this guy doesn't seem like Zarya's type. Aren't that light on my feet? Those aren't your feet. Those are mine. And all new Parenthood after Freno. Tonight at 6 on WGN. Fight back. Join us. Coming this fall, one of the most highly anticipated series of the new season. Lost for 20 years, his legacy to the world will finally be revealed. Talk to me! From the creator of Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry's Earth Final Conflict. Premiering October 18th on WGN. Josh Lewin with Steve Stone. Tenth inning show coming up. But Stoney, thank you again for everything. It's been real. It's been my, fun. My pleasure, Josh. And it has been quite a year. One that we will not soon forget. Well, we'll, we'll try. Uh, <laughs> 68 and 94. We, we hope we can bring you better tidings this year. But you, you've been a great partner. I really look forward to it again next year. Okay, and we'll see you next year. So Josh has a tenth inning for you featuring the GMC game highlights. I'm sure you won't want to miss that. Boy, you are, you are outstanding at just teasing <laughs> the next stuff. How'd you learn how to do that? Arnie Harris is the producer director of Cubs Baseball and WGN. Associate producer, Mandy Cohen. Thank you very much, Mandy. And to our entire crew, both here and of course back in Chicago. Thanks everybody for a fun year. Cubs lose to the Cardinals today, two to one. We've got more to tell you. The 10th inning show is next. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN brought to you by Budweiser the king of beers who reminds you friends know when to say when the stars of Chicagoland your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer Ameritech your link to better communication Pepsi generation next Montgomery Ward Nissan, your local Nissan store, encourages you to test drive the all-new 1998 Altima today. 
and by southwest airlines with fares so